Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So I got my uh, my silly uh, European hat on today because it's cold in the shop. Um, it's raining a little bit outside, um, but whatever for whatever reason, it's actually pretty physically cold in the shop today. So it's you know 39 or 40 degrees, something like that, which is getting chilly. Um, you know, some of you northern folks, that's nothing, but uh, for us. California uh, <laughs> uh, fake ranchers like myself uh, that's getting cold in the shop so anyway I got my funny hat on and uh, and uh, trying to stay warm down here so anyway um, got a lot of responses on the uh, my uh, light tower uh, testing and uh, we're gonna look at the damage on the uh, the come along and talk about uh, solutions and how to repair that because I, I plan on repairing it because it's my favorite come along. And then um, a friend of mine, uh, Dennis Pantazas, uh, who is a structural civil engineer, um, just for fun, uh, I gave him the, uh, 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 the layout of the, uh, of the tower uh, electronically and he ran um, you know, proper engineering calculations uh, on the uh, on the tower, and then kind of gave me some uh, some feedback on it. And it's actually surprisingly positive, uh, is kind of what I thought. And uh, my current intent right now is to mount a solar powered light at the top. And uh, the folks that uh, correctly indicated that the uh, uh, the vertical loading is kind of a, a minor. Uh, uh, consideration on that it's really the wind loading the thing that wants to tip it over and stretch one side and compress the other those that's really the main consideration on a, on a tower like that uh, incidentally uh, um, I, <clears throat> I was pretty surprised we had a big windstorm up here and the, the tower was out behind the shop and I went out there after the storm and the things laying on the, on its side it fell over and I'm like what the heck, right? Well, apparently it had enough windage um, to uh, upset it and knock it over. And uh, yeah, we got some, I would say, 80 mile an hour gusts up here, and uh, kind of surprised me because it's just tubing, right? So you wouldn't think that that hat would have much windage. Um, let's see what else. Um, Oh, and it was also uh, kind of a big response and, uh, and some really good feedback on the hockey tape thing. So uh, I learned a couple of things from some of you Canucks and, uh, and hockey players out there. And uh, they referred me to some, uh, some resources. And uh, so I've got some more ordered. I got a little bit left. I'm going to show uh, what I learned and, uh, and uh, a better way to wrap a grip maybe. Okay, so let's uh, let's get cracking. Here's the uh, <laughs> here's the come along, and then the kind of the aftermath of the piece that uh, that blew out. And you know this was this was totally my fault. I was using this bar here, and which is you know it's a piece of one inch chromoly tubing, but um, and this is a um, a little mule come along. It's not a lug all. It's a little different. Um, and it has a, uh, I don't have the stock handle anymore, and I'll explain that <laughs> why uh, in a minute. But uh, the stock handle actually has a little, a little detent that this uh, screws into and kind of locks it in there, keeps it from falling on your head or whatever. But that detent will only go in when you're fully engaged. Well, like a bozo, I guess this was all the way in, and then when I had this tube in here I was up against that stop and you know you know bozo uh, struck um, now that said so here's a like I said I don't have the stock handle anymore but um, they usually they they build in the overload protection <clears throat> into these hoists or these come alongs into the handle so the idea is that when you're when you're reefing on this and you're pulling on it really hard the handle fails first and that's exactly what happened to the stock handle it's a a thin wall aluminum tube with a piece of wood in it this isn't it uh, this is for a lug all hoist here 
Um, and I was using it and, you know, near the maximum and then, you know, the, uh, the handle let go. So what do you do? You get something that fits, right? And, uh, and Bob's your uncle and, and you continue on, right? So, you know, they want 40 bucks for a new handle, right? So, uh, <laughs> I don't know about you, but, uh, uh I'm probably not going to buy a new handle. <laughs> I'm going to make my own, right? So, and then anyway, uh, so we got a couple of choices for fixing this, but uh, let's get in a little closer and let's talk about that. These are the pieces that, uh, that popped out of this. Now this is cast aluminum here, and um, many years ago I used to work for a company that had an aluminum foundry. So this is probably uh, 356 T6 aluminum. So it's as cast, it's 356, and then they, um, um, they heat treat it to a T6, they solution treat it to a T6 condition. Uh, so it's, you know, it's relatively strong. Um, not the same as 6061, uh, for example, T6, but pretty good. Um, it actually machines better in the, in the solution treated condition, but uh, that's another story. Now, pretty easy to weld 356 aluminum. So we could easily put these pieces back in, and you can see one of the issues, right, is it had a, a notch in it. And there's a notch on the other side, right? It had a notch in it, so I was wailing against that notch, right? And um, a big hog body like myself uh, uh, was able to pop that loose, right? Now, it, granted, I was leaning on that pretty good, right? Um, now, you know, you could V this out, you could weld that up and be and make a really nice job of it, honestly. Uh, here's the problem, is um, when you weld on aluminum, heat treated aluminum, guess what? It's not heat treated anymore. So it becomes not T6. Now this, it wouldn't affect this, but this area here would become temper zero. And that's a problem because that's a, the silly putty version of aluminum, okay? Uh, zero temper. So it's likely that that would just do that again, even with, well, maybe, maybe not with full engagement. So my thought is that I'm probably just going to knock that thing off of there and have a nice flat surface to work with to build a new um, receiver for the, uh, for the tube. You know, it's one inch OD, right? Or this is one inch OD and uh, 25 millimeter for our uh, European uh, or metrically, metrically inclined folks. Um, you know, and with full engagement, it might be okay, but, you know, I don't want to do this twice. I want to do it once. So I think I'm going to knock that off, or that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm going to knock that off and actually bolt, and do, not do any welding, bolt it to this moving part here and make this out of steel. Uh, so the receiver is real heavy duty and durable. Now, I've been looking at this for a couple of days now, <laughs> disgusted at myself uh, for being a bozo. And if you notice here, you know, the center line, the center line is here. This is the load line right through here, right? And this is offset from that load line. And I've noticed this before when you're, when you're whaling on this, there's, there's this kind of a torque that uh, gets applied to this that makes it want to, uh, it's a moment load anyway, it pulls it off center. And um, so the more I look at this, the more I think that I might attach to this nice thick part up here and put it on the center line so that my, uh, that my, uh, my, cheater, <laughs> my cheater bar here goes, plugs into the, uh, the center line. So I'll draw a little sketch of what I'm thinking about and uh, or the two the two ideas of what I'm thinking about and then uh, and uh, I'm not ready to do it yet because I got to get some materials that I don't have surprisingly and uh, and then do that work. But I'll show you the two ideas that I'm thinking of and you guys can um, throw some comments up because I know you're just itching to comment on this.
So the idea here, option one, um, I have a piece of uh, inch and a quarter square tubing and I would just kind of cut the ends away and put a couple of flathead screws and then the, uh, the handle would just plug in uh, either from this direction or this direction, right? And, um, and now I got a, a new pocket that's made out of steel. So option two, um, similar idea, but mounted to the thicker part of the, um, the come along that I showed you. And then this just plugs right onto that stub. This has the, uh, the option, you know, the uh, advantage that, you know, this is kind of on the center line, right, uh, of the whole thing. So this would be offset, this would be on the center line. And then while I was doing this, I thought of another idea. <laughs> But I'm not going to sketch that. So uh, enough sketching for today. Right now, I think I like this uh, this idea the best. Uh, it gives me the best uh, mounting surface. Um, I don't have to disassemble the the come along to uh, to do the work. Can make this offline and then attach it. And Bob's your uncle. Uh, I'm good to go. But I got an idea for making it easy to thread on there and so that it, the handle's retained. So uh, stay tuned for that. So I was thinking about, I was thinking about this bar here, and um, you know I, I've had this thing uh, since probably 1989 uh, or 90, 1990, something like that. And what this is, um, I work for a company that uh, um, built, uh, or one of their divisions uh, built go kart racing go karts, and so there was all this leftover chromoly tubing. Um, you know, that was part of the uh, operation. So anyway, I got a couple pieces of chromoly tubing. But uh, it's nice and strong. It's, uh, it's not real thick wall. Uh, this is probably 083 here, maybe something like that. Um, and um, I use this thing for all kinds of stuff. And one of the main uses I use is steering my... So it's the... It's my come along handle, it's my toe jack, my mechanical toe jack handle, um, it's my steering system for uh, my uh, machinery moving skates, and then if you get into a, into a tight spot, you can, uh, you can go sideways with it there. And it's also the handle that goes on my rod bender, so I use this thing for all kinds of stuff, and I've had it, well, since 1990 roughly, and it's not bent, it's not jacked up, and uh, it's still in uh, pretty good shape. So this is my kind of go-to handle for like a lot of stuff. So, and this, this was just pure accident. I, uh, I put this on at an angle, I don't know why, and um, um, I don't know, maybe it was a walking stick. I, I don't even remember now, it's been so long. But uh, that little pitch, uh, that, little, that little angle has come in really handy a, a bunch of times. If I had it to do over again, I'd probably make that just a little bit longer um, and maybe uh, kick that angle a little bit more. But that, that's, that's borderline uh, uh, sniveling there. So. so I got a lot of uh, really good feedback on the, uh, the hockey tape. And it turns out uh, Howie's is a pretty good brand, uh, according to most of the hockey, uh, the hockey pucks out there, chucks, pucks, whatever. Um, anyway, uh, they turned me on to a, uh, a handle wrapping method that uh, I didn't even think about, right? But let's, uh, let's go. I'm, I'm going to try it. This is the first time I'm trying it. I don't have much tape left here, so uh, I'll probably just do kind of a short section and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try it. So the idea is that you... You, you start a you start a, a layer right you get a good a good start going and then you you pull out some of uh, the tape I don't know that's 18 inches or something like that and then you spin it up and kind of make a cord out of it let's see let's make sure I'm on the sticky side there so now I got a kind of a sticky cord right and the idea is you take that sticky cord and make a helix around there like so let's see I gotta make sure I'm going right way. okay and then what we do is now we start wrapping over that helix 
and it's like slicker than snot actually well, not literally right um, but it's just a it's just a clever method that uses the the same material yeah and it gives you kind of a ridge yeah this is this is beautiful this works great I didn't actually use that much tape you know and then you could cover it up with as as many uh, layers as you want all right let's not go crazy here so this is the, a handle to nothing but now I got a oh yeah that's pretty sweet so it's encased in there it's um, yep I think that's my new go-to thing I'm gonna show you one more method uh, that I've used on some uh, railings uh, in particular uh, like uh, hand railings in, in strange places so let me show you one more method I, this is good though I like that one okay so this next one so this is uh, this is from West Marine it's uh, it's kind of like utility sailing uh, utility cord it's uh, eighth inch diameter three millimeter uh, uh, Dacron cord. Ooh, a little uh, wind blowing some rain out of the trees. Um, and uh, it's, it's just great uh, heavy duty string. I think it's you know, five or eight hundred pound uh, breaking strength. But uh, you can create a grip with this too. And some of you sailor folk out there um, might uh, recognize this. So we're going to start with a uh, um, what is that a clove hitch you know I, I can't remember the name of that I think it's a clove hitch it's two half hitches that are reversed that kind of self lock and then what you do actually uh, I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can see the process okay let me uh, refocus and I'll get you in closer so the deal okay so here's our uh, our free end here so basically it's a series a series of of running half hitches and as as long as you put all the half hitches in the same direction what happens is you end up with and this is what made me think of this when I did the tape is you end up with it kind of spirals and you know any of uh, you Navy boys out there or Navy boys and girls, um, probably in different parts of the ships you were on, uh, they did. They used to do handrails like this. So, you know, the middle of uh, you're out near Diego Garcia, uh, baking in the sun out there uh, with nothing to do. Um, they, you, uh, you chip rust and uh, you fix up handrails, right? <laughs> Oop, sorry. Anyway, that's the. Uh, so it's just a series of so now let's uh, let's continue on here so if you if you then go the other way what happens is so if you alternate yeah that's what I wanted to do if you alternate you uh, you get a straight line or kind of a, you know a bumpy straight line like that. Let's see that way. And this cord is just excellent for that. So I don't know. You could put. Uh, you could use this for a knife handle. Uh, put it on your sledgehammer. Your splitting mall. Let's see. Your your hockey bat. <laughs> your hurling stick. Let's see what else. What else do people have? I don't know. Anyway, I think you get the idea. So so that's um, half hitches in the same direction, and this is alternating. And then you know you can. You can do whatever you want from there, but this makes a pretty good grip too. And you know, when you end, you can um, 
Um, you can end in a, uh, a Turk's head at either end and make it really super, super califragilistic hot whammy. Um, or you can just end and then um, uh, super glue, you know, tuck it in and super glue it so that it doesn't come unraveled. So. Well, I already warned you guys that this, uh, this kindling splitter was going to show its face again. And um, so the prototyping continues. And um, the latest improvement is uh, just cutting the box, you know, cutting a notch in the five gallon bucket to put around this, uh, my existing setup. And what it does, and you'll see in a second, is, you know, one of the, the negatives. Um, is the kindling hits it it splits and it goes all over the place and you have to pick you have to bend down and pick it up with this it's contained in the bucket and um, and so if if a piece needs additional splitting you can just grab it and do it you don't have to bend down and pick it up and then you can just scoop the completed stuff out and put it into your receptacle of choice now it gets me thinking that if you made the the splitter have a round base uh, that that fit in a normal five gallon bucket that that would be a good improvement and uh, so that may be the next uh, the next level and then it leaves the bucket intact now the only thing that's uh, with that is the the bucket doesn't sit flat down on the firm surface so uh, it might need um, um, well, I don't know. I don't know how it would behave. So, uh, you know, the bucket's not flat on the bottom. So transmitting that force into a, into a solid surface, you need a solid surface to do this on. But anyway, let's, uh, let's try it, uh, again. And, uh, you can kind of see, uh, how it, uh, how it, uh, And then if I want to do that one again, I can, I can just reach in there and pull it up and, uh, re and reprocess it, right? See that one, I don't, I don't like the size of that one. I'm going to get some See now there, and this is probably fine, but me being the, you know, measurement Nazi that I am, um, then uh, I kind of want to uh, do it again, right? So let's, uh, there's two by four. Okay, and then these, I probably want to split those. Eh, let's do them in thirds. Like and see, I can just reach in, oops, reach in here and grab another one uh, pretty easily. Okay, well, I think you guys get the idea. And now I just take out the, the goodies and drop them in my, my receptacle, okay? Anyway, um, like I said, you'll see this again. This is a kind of a work in progress, you know? You, uh, you try it, then you go, mm, yeah, that would be better. And uh, you make a little improvement. And then, uh, you know, sharing it with you guys, and, uh, you can uh, build your own or watch me use mine. So here's a uh, <clears throat> close-up of the corner or, you know, I guess an intersection detail. So this is your inch and a quarter EMT. This is three-quarter EMT. Um, and basically I you know, basically flattened the ends um, in the arbor press or the vise depending on which which one it was. Um, the longer ones I did in the arbor press and the short ones I did in the vise typically. And then these are number 14 um, self-tapping screws. So just put it all together. And um, now <clears throat> somebody commented they said hey this thing in the wind those things are going to rattle loose etc etc probably a valid concern right so you could probably replace these or enhance them 
by adding some pop rivets here too and uh, maybe some stainless steel pop rivets right so when you're putting this together maybe you put one self tapper just to kind of hold things in position get things all squared up and then drill through and put a couple of a uh, couple of high strength uh, pop rivets through that intersection right so anyway and then this is just a you know a standard uh, uh, EMT coupler here uh, inch and a quarter and it's kind of like a collet system right in fact Stan used to get pissed at me because I would call him the collet type and uh, he says it's a coupling it's not a collet and uh, anyway it's like a collet to me but uh, so the it's it's got a, a loose ring in there that crimps down and kind of bites into the uh, the EMT now these you know, I don't know, uh, Dennis mentioned that uh, these are hard to evaluate from a structural standpoint, but uh, you could easily just drill through with additional um, self-tappers through the coupling and into the tube, you know, in three places or something like that. And then the, uh, the pullout would be enhanced uh, greatly. So anyway, some folks asked about what that looks like. Anyway, there it is. So you saw the uh, the as built on the tower, uh, the joint connections, and then um, actually I found these uh, out in my scrap pile. This was me uh, kind of uh, a, yeah I don't know prototyping some of the possible joint configurations to kind of see how they uh, how they um, might work out, and this was what I did initially right um, and then I got kind of excited because these are pretty strong actually and uh, uh, I was surprised how how strong they were so I said geez uh, one could build a tower right and um, so anyway here's, you know, here's a uh, uh, a very uh, acute angle attachment here with a with a long overlap here's a shallower angle attachment than a 90 perpendicular attachment and then uh, here's some of the crosses. Um, so these are the these are a little bit of a pain. Uh, the crosses, because um, depending on the angle the two tubes come together, this flat spot kind of. Uh, uh, actually, I don't have one here, but the flat spot gets longer. So uh, I said, "Oh, hey, this works great." And then I went to do the tower, and uh, the tube angle is much closer together. So. The flat spots were longer, but anyway, uh, that's kind of that's the joinery. Quarter twenty with a nut and stuff, and then uh, uh, typically two uh, uh, fourteen number fourteen uh, self tappers uh, through the through the tube there. But uh, let's uh, I'm going to try to show some of Dennis's uh, uh, tower calculations, and uh, we'll wrap this video up and uh, see you guys next week. Eh?